Hi everyone. So I recently purchased the Samsung Frame TV and I was not planning to review TVs on my channel because I don't usually upgrade them so easily. But I was looking for a high refresh rate TV because of my Xbox One S and a lot of people are also looking for a high refresh rate TV. I was actually waiting for Mio QLED TV but uh, it does not have 120Hz refresh rate. But that TV does have Dolby Vision and this TV doesn't. But I still went with this because I just wanted to do gaming and I needed a brighter panel because my old TV was not bright enough. As you can see I am just next to the window and there's a lot of light coming in this is the art mode that's why the brightness is a little low because i set it like that but in gaming mode it's quite bright so that was my reason for going for this tv okay i'll do one thing i will tell you my conclusion right now so you don't have to spend more time i actually did my research because i didn't want to throw my money on tvs like i do on phones on tablet because this is something i'm not going to replace so easily and, and these are not easy to sell so uh, if you want a tv just for media consumption i think you should go for me qled tv and save some money because that tv has dolby vision hdr 10 plus hdr hlg all of that this tv does not have dolby vision if you want the best sound and best picture quality in this price range you can go for sony 8000 h series you can also go for lg nano cell but i think i will choose this tv over that uh, but if you really want a good tv that can decorate your hall like this uh, it also has 120 hz refresh rate if you want to do gaming and if you want a brighter panel because this tv has 550 nits brightness so I think this is a great TV to buy. So I purchased this TV for 74,000 rupees, which is approximately $1,000. And that's the actual price of US as well. So I think it's a good value right now and it's on sale if you want to purchase it. I didn't do the unboxing video of this TV because even I might have slept watching that. So I will just tell you what you get in the box. You will get a normal TV stand, a no gap wall mount, a box that has all the connections, a optical fiber cable that connects to the TV and to the box and one remote. I didn't also make an overview video because this TV changed my mind so many times I thought I should try everything before reviewing it. When I say everything, I mean I tried and changed every setting possible. So I wanted to check the auto brightness in day and night, I wanted to check the black levels, I wanted to play the games and see how the gaming mode works. You won't believe how many times I changed the picture profile because what you get out of the box is just awful. But I will come to that in a minute. I think by now many of you already know the existence of this TV and the purpose. It's a frame. Well, kinda. It fits on your wall perfectly. It has a no gap wall mount. It's quite thick but I love the uniformity of this TV. And the brush metal finish is also nice and also you can see the bezels. They are very very thin. So you only need one optical cable that connects to the one box and all the ports are there so you don't have to worry about the wirings. So basically this TV is dumb, it's just have display and speaker and the brain is outside its body. And for the ports you have only one HDMI 2.1 port and three HDMI port. You also have an EARC port for lossless audio. If you're not rich or not a reviewer I think you'll be okay with one 2.1 port because you can just connect your gaming console with that and get 120Hz refresh rate. But if you really want to go for multiple port and want to use multiple console or your PC with this display I think you should go for LG or some other brand. You also get some magnetic metal frames with this TV but you don't get that in India. So this frame TV is not fully framed. Frame. Although I wanted to talk about the art feature of this TV later but I think this is the appropriate time. So if I talk about the art feature I think it's kind of useless. When I say kind of useless because you can only get some 20 free arts but rest you have to subscribe. I already paid for this TV I don't want to subscribe for more. See that's why I didn't want to make an overview video because in overview video I would have said that this art thing is a scam. But now I downloaded a lot of arts from the internet itself so I like it now. You can customize the mount inside the TV itself. Uh, you can use the motion sensor to keep it on or keep it off according to your need. You can also turn on the night mode so when the lights are off it will automatically turn off. You can set the brightness according to your need and if you're okay with the grey metal finish and it can go with your interior I think you're good to go. Well, it's a TV after all and what's a TV without a good display? It may be not the cheapest 120Hz refresh rate TV or cheapest QLED TV but that's the cheapest combination you can find right now. And the reason it is cheap because it has edge LED. If you don't understand the difference between edge LED and direct LED, so edge LEDs are LEDs on the edges and it is the cheapest way to implement in a TV. In direct LED you get LEDs on the whole panel. The count of the LED depend upon the price. The biggest problem with edge LED is you can see the light bleeding from the corners and that was the issue with my previous TV as well. But Samsung has worked really well on this TV so you can barely see any sort of light bleeding. 
It's a VA panel, so the contrast ratio is amazing. In specification, is 8000 raised to 1, but in layman terms, you can get great blacks out of this TV. Yes, viewing angles are not usually great on VA panel, but I didn't face that issue on this TV. But if you seriously want to watch your TV in different angles, I think you should go for OLED or IPS panel. I know it's not a TV review channel, so less specification and more experience. So when I first started using this TV and turned on the adaptive mode, I was disappointed. And even in the standard picture profile, the colors were way off. I mean, don't get me wrong, it might work in places like Netflix, but on Prime Video, it was just awful. So I'll show you an example. So if you watch The Office on Prime Video, you will see their faces, they feel like tomatoes. And also the motion smoothing technology also make it weird. In simple words, we are used to watch movies in 24 frames per second, but with this MEMC technology, it adds multiple frames, so you can see the smoothing of the frames. Uh, it might work in some situation, but it doesn't work everywhere. And after that, I felt like I wasted my money. And if the game didn't work as well, I am screwed. Well, it's Samsung and you cannot get the experience you want out of the box. I think this joke makes sense for Exynos users. But the strange part was this TV does have 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. So I changed the picture profile and I used the media. I think the color was great in that profile, but the picture was really warm. I mean, really, really warm. By the way, you also get a filmmaker mode so you can see the actual color, uh, but for media consumption, it's kind of dull. So after two days and tried 100 different settings, I think I made it perfect. So the panel is not bad after all. I mean, I think it's great. It's just you need to tweak the setting according to your need. If you want to know my settings, I will let you know. But I think you can also change the setting according to the apps as well. So for Netflix and Apple, the motion smoothing works really well, but with the Prime Video, it doesn't. So I think you should change the setting accordingly. There's one thing I definitely miss on this TV and that is Dolby Vision. Uh, I had to change some contrast and details on Netflix to watch the content in a better experience. But I think I'm happy with the panel and the colors are great and the black slavers are good as well. Whew. So this panel is really bright and it can go up to 550 nits and that was the main reason I went with this panel uh, because my TV is just next to the balcony door and whenever I want to watch something in the morning when there is sunlight I, it was very difficult to watch in my previous TV. I also like the reflective coating on this TV so it minimizes the reflection. Uh, that is the main reason I didn't go for LG CX model because the reflection is really bad on OLED TV. Also if you want to put your TV in a brighter room I think you should go for QLED rather than OLED and the auto brightness feature works great on this TV as well. As for more specification, it is a 10-bit panel and you can check that in Netflix test pattern app if you want. It does not support Dolby Vision, but it does support HDR10+, which is proprietary to Samsung. It does handle the HDR contents really well and the picture quality index is 3400, which is decent. It also has dual LED panel and which means you can get both warmer and cooler tones according to your need. I like the warm sort of movie experience, but you can also set it to cool. When I say cool, it does not mean cool. You can set it to cooler temperature. Also, the gaming experience on this TV is amazing. I have one box, one S, and I was planning to upgrade this TV for better brightness. And also, I was planning to upgrade to Xbox Series X. But I think using this console on this TV, I think I'm really satisfied. So I can play games on 2K 120Hz refresh rate, and the upscaling to 4K is also great. So I am not going to plan my console anytime soon. Latency on this TV is also great and it can go as low as 10 milliseconds, which is great for a TV. And it also has a gaming mode which turns automatically on when you go to the Xbox HDMI 4 port. What gaming mode does is it enhances the brightness and sound accordingly. You don't have to look for the actual color in gaming, so the experience in gaming was really good. So, again for that. Which brings me to the sound. We all know that TV do not have great sound system, that's why we have sound bars. Although I would say the 40 watt speakers on this TV is adequately loud and the bass is also good. Keep all your game as a lost, as a lost. It's all the same as a lost, as a lost, as a lost, as a lost. They're not amazing but the intelligent mode on this TV works really good with sound. So what the intelligent mode does is it amplifies the sound according to the environment. So if you have a noisy environment it increases the dialogue sound. So whenever the music is playing it increases the bass itself. If you want to listen to the music on this TV the music experience is also great. 
So this TV also have a EARC HDMI port if you want to listen to lossless music and you can attach a good soundbar with that. You get a Dolby Digital Sound and Dolby Atmos but it does not have a certification for Dolby Atmos. So now we need to talk about the software or smartness side of the system. So you do not get Play Store on this TV. So if you're someone who wants to download multiple apps or games, I think this is not a system for you. I don't really play games or download many applications other than a streaming services. So Tizen OS was fine for me. But if you want to do that, this TV is not for you. About the experience, I think it's fast. It does hang and it has bugs, but I think that is with the most TVOS out there. But the most irritating thing about this TV is the voice assistant. It is horrible. I mean, horrible. So you get Bixby, Google Assistant and Alexa on the system. But why I'm saying it's horrible? Because of the search. So if you want to search anything on this TV using Google Assistant and Alexa, it can only search in YouTube. And if you're using Bixby, well, most of the time it does not understand what you're saying and most of the time the search feature does not work and the command is just too big for Bixby. Play atypical on Netflix. Here is what I found. Play the office on Prime Video. Here is what I found. Play the office on Prime Video. Here are 16 results for that keyword. Play atypical on Netflix. I need a short utterance to continue. Play the office on Prime Video. Here's what I found. So Samsung is just giving you option to choose a stupid Bixby or the dumbed down version of Alexa or Google Assistant. The remote is also decent. You get a dedicated Netflix and Prime Video button, also Z5. The channel button usually does not work other than the normal cable TV. But for the volume, you can increase the volume, decrease the volume and also press the button for mute. Uh, you get the back, home and a play pause button. These are your normal controls. And these things also work for TV, so I don't easily use that. And this is for voice assistant. With the power button, you can turn on and turn off the art mode. So if you click once, it will just go back to TV. And if you click it again, it will go back to art mode. But if you want to turn off the TV, you can just press and hold this button and it's going to turn off the TV. So here it is guys, this was my review for the Samsung The Frame and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other people. Do let me know if you want me to review these kind of stuff and if you really like my content, please subscribe to my channel. My name is Rohit, I'll see you in the next one, till then.